So with that, I'm going to go on to the open versus closed ended questions, right? You know, most of the time people are taught that, you know, open ended questions are questions that can't be answered by yes or no. Well, that's true, but that's kind of a weak answer if you ask me. Here's the difference in open versus closed ended questions. All open ended questions start with who, what, where, why, when, how, which, right? Those are closed ended questions or open ended questions, sorry. Closed ended questions is, are, would, could, should, do, does. A lot of people know this. A lot of people sort of, for me, this was very enlightening when I learned it. And I was like, oh my God, I wish I'd learned this, you know, 30 years ago. I wish someone had taught it to me. Um, because this is what I needed to understand. We have spent today talking about how people make decisions. We've spent today talking about, well, how do I earn the right to ask questions? And now we want to talk about, well, what kinds of questions should I be asking? And this is how you want to start to bucket these types of things. This next slide, and, and it's really sort of getting to the end, so feel free to come with, with more questions in a minute, is how I encourage people to determine what are the right questions, right? How do I do this? So, for example, you know, the question came of, well, if I'm in a child ego state and uh, I think they're in a parent ego state, a critical parent, what kinds of questions should I be asking? Well, I would be looking for open-ended questions more than closed ended questions, right? I think that that is, um, is the piece that you really, really wanna look for is in, in that particular scenario. It doesn't mean you couldn't have closed ended questions, you do, but um, I would focus on the open. One of the other things I remind people about open versus closed is that open ended questions are designed to build trust. They're designed to do to gain better understanding of each other, to get that mutual frame of reference. Closed-ended questions, in most cases, are designed to end the topic of conversation and move forward. So when you are talking and you think about those ego states, you know, if you've done a good job and it's like, hey, you like the demo, whatever, whatever, you know, you know, can we move forward to the next part of the discussion or can we can we introduce someone to this or, um, you know, it, those questions are going to let you try and get them to move forward in that adult ego state. So this is how I tell people to break it down, right? I, I teach this thing called neat selling, which talks about focusing on need, the economic impact of the need, the access to authority, right? Like we know that decisions are no longer up to one person. There's, you know, according to about six different people, there's about 12.2483 times pi people deciding who's going to make this decision. So it's more about access to authority and then about timeline. So what I encourage people to do is as you're focusing on customers need, come up with a bunch of who, what, where, when questions you could be asking them, right? Come up with some is, are, would, could, should questions, right? Create basically a playbook of questions you could be asking. Same thing with economic impact, which is really about budget, right? Uh, meaning that if you don't know the, if they don't understand the economic impact that your solution brings, then it doesn't matter what their budget is. Uh, same thing with access to authority and timeline. What I've encouraged people to do is I tell you to take one at a time. Focus on need first. Come up with a bunch of need questions that are open and closed-ended, right? Role play them. Test them with your team. It's a good exercise as part of the sales team meeting. You know, every Monday morning, we're going to take 10 minutes and we're going to focus on open-ended questions and closed-ended questions for need. And that's it. Nothing else that week. The next week, you can do another one. I encourage people to do that. If you've got a large team or, or a medium sized team, you know, I'm definitely open to or I think it's an, it's important to have the sales team go into pairs. You know, these two people are going to work on need. These two people are going to come on economic impact. These two people are going to do access to authority. These two people are going to do timeline and they have to go put their put it together and they've got to come back and do a presentation to the team. Right. It's a great way to assign some accountability to the team, uh, let them practice some of their own leadership skills, let them practice their uh, team partnering skills, their teamwork skills. Um, and it allows you as a manager to control, to influence the process without totally trying to control it and micromanage it. So that's the basic that's the basics of, of you know, this open and closed ended questions.